Hey people, so this video will be about getting keyboard inputs or rather control inputs since it also includes the mouse. Now in Space Engineers you can't get all of the keyboard buttons into your script. Um, you can only get what you usually use for control. So uh, QWE, ASD, C and Space plus the arrow key slash the mouse. The arrow key and the mouse uh, access the same input so to speak. So obviously I am, well kind of obviously I'm controlling this camera using my mouse and I can move slow and fast and uh, basically the same way as I move my character. It makes for a pretty fluent experience and uh, the script for that is rather simple. So standard block declaration, fetching the blocks, this down here is basically all that runs the camera. So I'm getting a rotation indicator, X and Y, which is the mouse up and down slash the arrow keys. And I divide them by two because they would be moving too fast if I didn't do so. Uh, the values can get rather large. Also, if you're using a controller, the values uh, I'm going to be showing you how to access can be rather large, so take that into consideration. I am using this from a keyboard and mouse perspective. So as a demonstration, I am going to make this thing work. This is, uh, well, basically it's pistons and rotors. So we got a piston for moving up and down, a piston for moving left and right, forwards and backwards, a rotor for, well, rolling, a rotor for yawing, and a rotor for pitching, and then a cockpit at the end, which we want to be able to use to move all of this. Right, so let's get over to Visual Studio. All right, so I've gone ahead and put in the blocks I'm going to use. So we have our three pistons, our three rotors, and the cockpit. The cockpit is needed because you can only get the movement input from a cockpit or a remote. They are basically your input that you are catching. And I'm going to use that through Control Ds. I put in the blocks and I put update frequency up here because we want it to run continuously so we don't have to run the block every time we push a button. So yeah, uh, I'm going to do this the simplest way possible, I think, uh, putting the values directly. So for the first three here, uh, I'm going to use the cockpit move indicator. That is basically your WASD space and C. So left, right, forward, backwards, up and down, or uh, jump and crouch. And I'm going to put piston up down, velocity is equal to cockpit move indicator. So the move indicator gives a, I think it's a vector tree. Yeah, it's a vector tree. So that is a, um, well, it's a data type with three different values and we only want one. So what we want now is uh, the space and control and that uh, we can get by typing another dot and then Y. Then we get the Y component of that vector. So one value. And basically this will output a value between uh, 1 and negative 1, depending on if you're jumping or crouching. So what will do, this will do is it will set the velocity of the piston to 1 if we are pressing space and minus 1 if we are pressing C. And since moving at 1 meter per second is a bit boring, I'm going to multiply that by 2. And we're going to do the same for the rest, so piston left right. Velocity equals cockpit move indicator and that x. I believe I turned, uh, let's just finish this, times 2. I believe I turned the piston in the wrong uh, orientation, so I'm going to put a minus in front of that. So that's just going to reverse this value. It's still between minus 1 and plus 1 and 0 when you're not pressing a button. Right, on the go, piston up. No, piston 4 back, so that's going to move us forwards and backwards equals cockpit move indicator dot C so X, Y, C, you may remember those uh, well, you may or may not if you have had vector math in school or have done anything with the uh, cat but yeah, that's what they're called um, and I believe I made that weird as well, so we're going to put another minus in front of that. Remember, I'm just converting the value. 
Now for a roll, I think. Yes, let's do roll next. So roll to roll. And that's target RPM. You can put it in red instead, but I think RPM works pretty well. It's equal to cockpit. In this case, we want rotation. No, sorry, roll indicator. So roll is your Q and E. Uh, I'm assuming here that you have all the standard inputs and I'm not using a controller. If you are using a controller, then the values will not be between minus one. One day may be a huge value. Um, so I'm not going to go into that because I've never played Space Engineers with an I controller. Uh, anyhow, roll indicator. Yes, Q and E, so your normal roll. And uh, yet again, I have forgot to put a minus. So roll indicator is just a single value. You don't need to put an X, Y, or Z after that. That is just your roll and that's it. So that's pretty straightforward. Next up, we are going to get the mouse inputs or the arrow keys. The arrow keys and the mouse have the same input. In case of using the arrow keys, the value will be plus or minus 9. And in the case of the mouse, uh, it can. It really depends on your DPI. If you swish your mouse fast enough, you can get up to several hundred. Uh, if you move slowly, it will be a very low value. So this is really good for controlling the aim of something. So go to pitch, target velocity, RPM is equal to cockpit, rotation indicator. This one has two components, so X and Y. And since we're doing pitch, I'm going to do Y. And I'm going to divide that by 2. As I said, the mouse can get up to a pretty big value. You don't have to do this. This is just for my convenience. And rotor yaw, target velocity RPM is equal to cockpit, rotation indicator X, and again divide by two. And I believe I turned this rotor a bit weird as well, so we're going to put a minus in front of that. And that is it. This is the code that it takes to get all your control inputs, so all six uh, inputs you can make. Uh, keep in mind that you don't have to do this. You don't have to put it uh, directly to something. You could, for example, use uh, one of the buttons as a toggle switch or something. Uh, so we could do if um, if cockpit move indicator y is greater than zero, then do something. Now, if you push if space you will trigger this code and it will be continue to be triggered as long as you hold space down. But as soon as you let space go, it will stop executing this piece of code. So yeah, that's just a suggestion. Anyhow, let's get back in the game world and see how this works. All right, let's stuff in the code. Yeah, I already had it tested, so I was cheating a bit there. So now we get in the cockpit. And if I move my mouse around, I can view just as I normally would. So if I press uh, W forward, we move forward, S back, space to go up, C to go down, A to go left, and D to go right. And if I push multiple buttons at the same time, so let's do SDC, it will move all of them. So W, A, space, and some mouse movement, get all of them at the same time. So it's uh, it's pretty neat. Um, this also makes a lot of uh, custom vehicles using pistons and rotors and whatnot possible. Um, though I really prefer, this is, this is one of my favorite uses. You could put some uh, conditional logic into it so that it would be only if the camera is active that your controls will go to the camera, otherwise it will just, well, do nothing and control the vehicle uh, or spacecraft or whatever. So uh, yeah, that is all I've got. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions regarding any of this, feel free to post a comment. I'm happy to try and answer any questions you may have. Oh, and I've put the safe game for this in the description below if you want to play around with it and or look at the code, even though the code is pretty simple. Uh, but yeah, cheers. Thank you for watching and uh, see ya.